everybody, welcome to today's product update on Daily IoT. Today we're gonna to be talking about the news that dropped coming out of Particle earlier this week about the new mesh devices, their Gen 3 is what they're referring to it as, and what that means for the Hockey Puck project. And so, if you haven't seen the notice, uh, I'll link it up down below, uh, the, the notice coming out of Particle about the three new devices that they are releasing they're taking pre-orders now. They're gonna drop in July of this year. And uh, you've got three new devices. You've got the Argon, the Boron, and the Xenon. And all of these share a common thing, which is they will all have the Nordic NRF chip on them, which gives them a Bluetooth out of the box. Um, and they can create 2.4 gigahertz mesh networks. And so one of the big things that they're pushing with these new devices is this mesh idea of mesh networks. And so you can put a whole bunch of them out, kind of like what I was talking about earlier, um, a month or so ago with the um, RFM 69 chips, although you're gonna get much better range with the RFM 69s. But uh, this concept of dropping a whole bunch of um, nodes that can talk to each other and relay messages and strengthen the network the more nodes you have and things like that. None of that applies to the Hockey Puck product. And so um, just as a quick um, fill you in if you haven't seen it, the Argon is really kind of like the next gen replacement for the Photon. It's Wi-Fi with the Bluetooth built in um, and some other things that I'll talk about in a minute. The Boron is the uh, predecessor, predecessor? Uh, anyway, the next generation of the Electron, so it's gonna be, it offers LTE, 2G, and 3G cell connectivity, so that's the Boron. And then finally, the Xenon, which is really just one of these dedicated mesh network nodes. It's Bluetooth and mesh, uh, and that's it. You're not gonna get Wi-Fi or cellular on that. And so, um, they're priced, um, Comparatively to what was before, like the uh, Argon is at the same price points, $19 in single quantity, um, just like the Photon is. And so uh, let's talk about the Argon. So a company drops a new line of products like this where I'm using one of their, what is now considered an older version. Uh, how do we approach that? Well, uh, so I looked into the Argon and it's got a lot of things that I am very interested in for the Hockey Puck product. Specifically, it's got onboard LiPo charging. And so I um, plan on powering the puck with a LiPo battery, uh, but was gonna need some external charging circuitry uh, to be able to uh, charge it and, and things like that. That's all built into the Argon, which is really cool. And you can power it directly with a LiPo and it will take uh, handle the charging for you as well, which is really cool. Thumbs up on that. Um, the other thing is, is they've got some, every single one of these, the Argon, Boron, and Xenon have two megabytes of extra flash on board. One of the big complaints in the Particle forums um, over the last year or two has been people running out of user code space because there wasn't enough. And so um, that's kind of a cool thing. I haven't run into that yet, but I assume maybe as the project grows and gets more complicated, I could hit that wall, but that shouldn't be a problem anymore with that extra user code space on the Argon. It's on all of them, but again, I'm just worried about the Argon. That's the one that I would consider using. Uh, so LiPo charging, extra space, um, and the Bluetooth. So for the setup experience, I was planning on doing serial as a, as a V1, where you would plug it into your computer and you can configure the Wi-Fi network and things like that so it can connect and communicate out with the API. The other option would be to do a soft AP hosted uh, web page, which there's instructions to do for particle. And that basically means that the part, the, the photon would host the web page and uh, you can connect to it as its own access point, configure the Wi-Fi, and then it's set up to connect to your Wi-Fi. Um, I wasn't really excited about pursuing that. Um, I feel like that could be a little clunky, um, but with Bluetooth, you can create an app-like experience where they have an app, they can connect directly to the device, and apparently all this is gonna be built in and they're gonna have sample code for all of this out of the box, which would be really cool for the setup experience for the product. And so um, that's really exciting. One major difference between the Photon and the Argon is that the Argon is based on the SB32 chip, the ESP32 uh, from Espressif. These are very, very popular and have been growing in popularity over the last year and a half to two years. Um, starting with the um, 8266, I always get that backward, or is it the 8622? Anyway, the ESP chips have been just exploding onto the scene, and so uh, the Argon will be based on that instead of the uh, old STM that they were using, 
And so, I, I'm interested in giving it a shot. I, I, I know that the SP chips are doing well. I don't know if the level of polish is there yet, um, as there is with the STM chips, but I don't know that for sure. Um, I'm sure Particle's working those things out. And so, July is when it drops. Uh, the really cool thing about this is because it's Particle and they've built this entire ecosystem around it, it should just work out of the box with my code. Now, there should be new uh, features that I can take advantage of like Bluetooth and things like that, but otherwise all of the code should run exactly the same because they've created an abstraction layer um, around that. And so, really excited to, uh, I've, I've pre-ordered one, really excited to get an Argon to start messing around with, see if I can swap it into the project. It would simplify the circuit quite a bit. Um, and so that's that's the, my thoughts on the latest particle announcement. Uh, now, for those that may be curious, the Photon, and they say this right on the announcement page down in the FAQ section, the Photon, the P1 modules, all of those things, E-series from Particle, none of those are going away with this new mesh line that they're releasing. They said they will continue to ship uh, all of those previous um, generation devices indefinitely until further notice is what they say. And so um, that's it. These are the types of things that we're navigating. Do we? Do we switch over to the Argon? I mean, eventually, I have to assume they're going to sunset the Photon, so it's good to be thinking about and, and kind of exploring what the what's next coming out of Particle, which is what I've chosen to go with for now. And so that is the latest update over the weekend. My goal is to get, again, what I talked about a couple of episodes ago, a a working version that's super simple that I can sit on my desk and pretend like it's a released product and go through update cycles and start really testing that, having it run long term and things like that. And so that's where we're at. That's the update. I hope everybody has an amazing weekend. I am really excited to uh, spend a lot of time on this over the weekend and make some good progress. And so I'm um, looking forward to the uh, report that will drop on Monday. Hopefully I've got some, some good progress to show you. Um, question of the day, have you purchased or pre-ordered one of the new particle uh, mesh devices, the Argon, Boron, or Xenon? If so, stick it down in the comments. Would love to hear your thoughts on that. Otherwise, until Monday, thank you so much for watching Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.